So I just made a gym edit for Sam Sulik and it's been going absolutely viral. So in this video, I have my project file for the edit pulled up and I'm gonna be showing you how I did everything in the edit. The speed ramping, the shakes, the zooms, the camera flashes, the sound effects, the paper textures, everything that I did in this video, I'm gonna be showing you and breaking down. Like, look at this, this is crazy. Also, maybe a few of you guys are wondering what it's like to have a video go this crazy. Basically a dopamine hit. Every single time you refresh, it says like 10 seconds ago, someone liked. Just figure I'd show that. We're gonna keep it as simple as possible and stay in Premiere Pro only by adding shakes for energy, paper textures for effects, camera flash transitions, sound effects, and I also make sure to color grade everything perfectly. Now, all those things can be a lot, even for someone like me that's been doing it for over 10 years. So I created editing assets to help speed up that workflow and make sure that you have your edit dialed in. Basically all the essentials for everything you need to create amazing gym edits. There's LUTs so you don't have to worry about color grading your footage, energy presets so you can click and drag on shakes with one click, paper textures to transform your video into a paper effect. We have drag and drop effects and transitions with the essentials effects and transition pack, all the sound effects that I used there, and a bunch more. This bundle is a handpicked selection of all my editing assets that I would use to create gym edits. This bundle's already at a huge discount, but since you're watching this video, if you use code SAM at checkout, you're gonna get $5 off your order to make that savings even more. If you wanna make yourself or a client look like a fake natural, this is the pack for you. I'll have it linked first thing in the description, that way you can follow along, as well as all the individual editing packs if you just want one of those. It's a great way to support my content and also level up your edits, but let's get into the video. So in Premiere Pro, this is what our timeline looks like. It might look a little overwhelming at first, but it's pretty much only three separate shots of Sam, Sam doing some bicep curls, a few screenshots of him posing, and then him doing the preacher curl. So just to show you that you don't need any special footage, I think Sam's a great example. He films himself at the gym with a tripod. He finally just upgraded his camera. But just to show you, here are the original clips with no color grading, speed ramping, effects, sound effects, or any of that. So these clips are nothing special other than Sam's freaky pump, but you can really obtain this with any kind of footage you have. And just to show you here, the three same clips, just with color grading, speed ramping, sound effects, paper effects, flash transitions, all the stuff that we're gonna be going over in this video. So obviously there's a massive difference between those. So let's show you how I would start an edit like this. I wanna transition between this bicep curl and this bicep curl with a few screenshots of him posing. You can see I already put a marker on the screenshots that I wanna take. This front double bicep, the front lat spread, and then this back shot. One thing that's gonna give your gym edit a bunch of energy is actually the song you select and then how you edit to that song. So this is a high energy beat by my friend Quinton, but you can find any of them on YouTube. And I want it to start right where this drop happens. So if you listen, you can hear how that intense hit comes in. So I want the clip to start here and then speed ramp in. And let's go ahead and listen where I want that second clip of him doing the other bicep curl to come in. Right there, right around here. Most of the time you can look at the audio wave. So if you drag your audio track a little bit bigger, you can hear. Let's go ahead and just make a marker where we want it. So it's right here. So I almost had it perfect with the cut. And let's go ahead and add a marker right where we want it to start as well. You can do that by just pressing M on your keyboard. We can cut out a little bit of this because we know we want that transition of the paper effects to go here. With gym edits, I think slow motion is very important. So I'm gonna make both of these clips 80% of the speed. So to do that, you can right click, go to speed and duration, change that speed to 80%. And then go ahead and turn the time interpolation from frame sampling to optical flow. It's basically gonna merge some of the frames together to give it a smoother slow motion. So let's go ahead and do that for our other clip as well. Make sure to click optical flow. So now that we have our clips in slow motion, I wanna find where I want the transition to start. It's really good to start transitions and effects on beat hits, so 808s, kicks, snares, anything. So let's listen for something like that in our edit. I think right there, that snare. You hear it the right there. So I'm gonna make a marker and that's where I want our clip to transition. Now let's go ahead and take that slow motion and speed ramp. So the easiest way in Premiere Pro is to actually take your video track layer, make it just a little bit taller so you can see your image in here and then go up to this FX box and right click, go to time remapping and click speed. Now this bar here is the speed of your video clip. So if you drag it up, it's gonna go faster. If you drag it down, it's gonna go slower. So I wanna find the peak of the bicep curl. So we might have to extend our clip out a little bit and just find that right about there. It doesn't have to be like the exact peak, maybe a little bit before it. It's really good to speed ramp your clip to action. So if it's like on a bench press, either going down or going up, like speed ramping that process will make it look a lot better rather than starting it midway through a rep. So press P on your keyboard and it's gonna open up this pen tool. And then you can go ahead and click right where your playhead is 
and it's gonna make this point. Now we want everything on this left-hand side to happen a lot faster. So I want it to look like Sam is curling really fast. So let's go ahead and click and drag this up. Let's try out 300 at first and see what that looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute the song so you guys don't have to listen to it over and over again, but it is a lot faster already. I think I'm gonna bring it up to around 350, just a little bit faster. This is all personal preference and it's gonna depend on your footage and everything, but I think for us, 350 looks a lot better. And now it looks a little robotic because it goes right from fast to slow. If you actually click on this dot here and click and drag it to the left, it's gonna have this nice ramp. And now when you play, it's gonna go from 350 back down to our 80% speed. If you wanna make it even a little smoother, you can click on this dot again and just kind of make it a little bit more of like a gradual, almost S kind of curve. So just play around with these points. You can extend them, make them shorter, longer, however you want to get it to the look that you want. But I think that's starting to look a lot better here. It's fast and then it slows down. And right here, we want it to transition. We kind of want it to speed up again, kind of making like a fast, slow, fast, almost like a wave. So let's go ahead and add another point, just how we did before. And now instead of the left-hand side, let's bring up the right-hand side. And we'll do that same 350. And then let's drag this out, make that little S curve. Remember the second marker down here is where the clip is gonna cut. I'm gonna drag this so a lot of the fast speed happens before that. So dragging it more this way will help out a lot. And I think I'm gonna actually bring this up a little bit more because I want more to happen before it cuts. So you can see it's kind of cutting on the movement down, which is perfect. So now there's a lot more emphasis on that one curl, making it look a little bit more intense. Looks like he's struggling. There's gonna be a lot more energy to it because it's now matching the flow of the song as well. There's a bunch of different reasons that speed ramping helps out a lot. So now when we play that, that's looking really good. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for our second clip. So I wanna start the clip right where he's like kinda of at the base, kinda of moving up. Go ahead and cut it and line it up with our keyframe. Right click on the FX box and go to time remapping speed. Now let's go ahead and find the apex of that bicep curl right there. Press P on our keyboard, make that point, and let's go ahead and drag that up to a roughly round 350. Now let's go ahead and make a point and then do that same thing. Bring up the right hand side and then drag it out this way. And let's make it a little faster again, maybe 450. So now let's play our edit. There's gonna be a gap in the middle, but we can see kind of how our clips look. Perfect, I like this a lot. So now let's add some zooms and some shakes before we add our paper effects. So in our project section, go to right click, create a new adjustment layer, and let's drag that above our first clip. And then under the effects tab, let's drag on our transform effect onto that adjustment layer. Go ahead and uncheck the use composition shutter and change that shutter angle to around 180. So now when you keyframe the scale and position, it's actually gonna have motion blur versus when you do it normally through the motion effect itself, it doesn't have motion blur and it loses a lot of energy. So using the transform effect is huge for gym edits. So I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe just the scale on this adjustment layer. And then let's go ahead and find where the slow motion kind of starts taking place. So roughly around the bottom of this graph here, it's not the exact bottom, but I think it looks good around this area. Let's go ahead and just scale in. It's gonna be all dependent on your clip, but for us, I think around 160 is looking good. So now if we play that, there's a nice crash zoom like this. I think I actually want the intensity of the motion blur to be a little bit more. So we can just bring up the shutter angle to whatever you want. The higher the number, the more intense, the lower the number, the less intense. And let's go ahead and highlight this back keyframe, right click on it and go to ease in. That's just gonna smooth out the motion of the zoom. And then I just wanted to ever so slightly zoom in throughout the rest, maybe around 175 and then bring that to the end. You can see how it continues the zoom after the big crash zoom. Now that's looking good, but for a gym edit, I think adding shakes and flashes and all this stuff will help out so much with the energy. It just makes it feel a lot more intense. So from my energy pack, the Twizzy Shake, if you just drag that on the adjustment layer, automatically gonna add this sh amazing shake. And I think it just adds so much more energy to it. And then we wanna go ahead and do that for our other clip. So you can actually just go ahead and hold Alt on your keyboard and drag that adjustment layer over to the end. And it's already looking pretty good. I think we might just need to change the values of the zoom. I think it's a little bit too much here. So let's go to like 130 instead of 160 or whatever we had before. And that just means we have to change this last keyframe as well. So let's go ahead and just see what we want it to be, maybe 140 or something. And then let's go ahead and trim that adjustment layer. So now with just speed ramping and some shakes, this is what our edit is looking like. 
I think it's already looking amazing, but let's go ahead and add a flash transition onto our adjustment layer as well. And let's go ahead and see, I only want this to last two frames. So let's go one, two, and then drag that on. That flash transition was for my essentials pack. It comes in the editor's bundle as well if you want it. Um, I'm just changing the preset a little bit to match our edit and our aesthetic a little bit more. So now there's a nice intense flash like that. Now, if you click on that effect and click control C, you can go to the other adjustment layer and paste that on there as well. So now you have that flash there as well. Now for these paper transitions, I wanted a bunch of flashes of Sam posing in different ways. So to get it on a piece of paper, the first step is to find the spot of the clip you want. So let's go ahead and find a frame that looks cool. For example, this frame looks good to me. And let's go ahead and take a screenshot of that. You can hit control shift E to export, or you can hit this little camera icon. If you don't see that, you can go to the button editor and then just drag that down onto this bar. Let's go ahead and take a screenshot. I'll make it a PNG. Now let's go ahead and number this one and then make sure to click import into project. That way it'll bring the screenshot back into Premiere Pro. So then in the project, you can see our screenshot has loaded up. Let's go ahead and take all of our screenshots right now, I already have them marked out for the sake of tutorial. So I'm just going to name this one two. name this one three. And then actually for that fourth frame, we're going to be using Sam doing this bicep curl so it can transition back into it. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the brightness and contrast for this adjustment layer so I can take the screenshot, name it four, and then we can go ahead and turn that back on. So from our project, if we drag our screenshot into the timeline, you can see now it has this still image right here. Let's go ahead and scale it kind of so it's like a little bit more center. Sam's more of the focus. And then from the ultimate texture bundle, the rips and folds, this also comes with the editor bundle that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The link's in the description. Uh, let's go ahead and find a paper texture that we like. Let's go ahead and drag on this black rip 14. And you can see it's super scaled in because it's actually 4K and the sequence we're working on is 1080p. So to fix that, you can just scale down and then turn it to screen. So the next part of the edit is probably the most tricky part. And it's because we want to split our image into two separate pieces like this and have our image be cut out around the piece of paper. So to do that, let's go into our edit. Let's go around seven frames forward. Go ahead and drag in our second screenshot. And then we need to find a paper texture with a line through it, very similar to this one. We go ahead and scale down through the motion option this time, turn our blending mode to screen. And for this to work, do not scale up this original image. We can change the scale of it later. Just find the paper texture to kind of like match around Sam. So this is gonna be the framing of the paper texture. So now highlight both of these clips, right click and go to nest. And we can name this too because it's our second image popping up and then go inside of that nested layer. Under effects, there's gonna be an effect called track matte key. Drag that onto your screenshot layer, not the paper texture layer and change that to video layer, whatever video layer your paper texture is. You can see I changed it to video five because our paper texture layer is on V5, which means video layer five. And then to get the paper texture back in, hold alt on your keyboard while selected on your paper texture layer and drag it up one time. And now you can see your image has this paper texture here. And now back in our sequence, our image is masked around the piece of paper perfectly. Let's go ahead and go to motion and just scale that up to where we want. So let's go ahead and put it here. You can see nicely how it's transparent behind. I think that looks really good. And now it's all personal preference, but let's have this left hand side stay up for like around 10 to 15 frames. So for us, we're gonna do 12 and then press C on our keyboard and cut it. So now we want this left hand side, it only to show the left side of the paper. So to do that, you can go to the opacity option here and click this pen and then just mask around down your image like this. And now you can see only the left hand side is visible. I'm gonna change the mask feather to zero. That way there's a harsh edge and it looks a little bit more like paper. And then it's gonna go left, right, pop up, and we just need to drag out our clip so there's a background here. And then from this cut, let's go another 12 frames forward. So five, 10, one, two. And now let's introduce our third image. And this one, we're not gonna cut at all. So let's go ahead and just scale him how we want. Back in the texture bundle, let's use black rip 42, scale it to our liking and turn it to screen. And this time let's not make it super robotic. So instead of going 12 frames, let's go like 20 instead, five, 10, 15, 20, and then go ahead and drag on that last image. And you want it to be the same image you're transitioning into. So for example, us here, you can see the screenshot last and does that. And in the original edit, we had it cut into four different segments like this. So let's go ahead and do that again and locate the one that has four. There's ones that are four vertically, there's cubes, there's a bunch of different ones, but let's go ahead and use that same exact one and scale it down like this. And last time we had to use the track mat effect because we wanted the border of the paper to be shown like this. But for this one, since we don't want the border to be showing, we can just turn it to screen and we don't have to use the track mat effect. But we are going to go ahead and nest it and name it four because we do want to split it into four separate segments. Let's go five frames forward, split it, five frames forward, split it, and then go like four frames forward, split it, 
and then it gets a little faster throughout. So now we just use that same process. We'll go ahead, mask around the edge. If you're having a hard time, you can scale out to like 25% or 50%. Do that on the first frame, go to the second one, and you just wanna slowly introduce it. So we masked out this side last time. Let's go ahead and mask out middle to left. And then the third one. And now we have each individual layer popping up like that. So now our edit looks like this. It's getting a lot closer to that original edit. Now we just need to add some zooms, some shakes, and then some flash transitions between the pieces of paper and then tie it all together with sound effects. So let's go ahead and nest that first image as well and name it one and then nest that third one and name it three. That way they're all split up into their own separate images. The first thing I wanna do is add those flash transitions. So again, under the transition pack, flash two, and then copy and paste that onto this image, copy and paste it onto this. So it has the flash, flash, and then probably flash for this one as well. That's already selling the effect a lot. Let's drag on another adjustment layer above all of this. Drag the transform effect on and uncheck the composition shutter and change that. Let's do the 360. I like the motion blur like that before. And I think 110 will be a nice zoom throughout. So it goes from 100 to 110 and just has a nice zoom effect throughout. Now this part's lacking a lot of energy. It just looks like kind of like a slideshow. So dragging on that twizzy shake preset again is gonna add so much more energy to this clip. Perfect. And then I brought in my essential sound pack and then inside of camera and shutters, I'm gonna go to the all in one by just double clicking on it and it'll open up in the source monitor. I like this one. So let's go ahead and drag that in. Let's have that camera flash happen on this first clip and then all the way at the end. So just holding alt, you can drag it and duplicate it like that. And I think I want sound effects here as well, but let's use a different one. I think this one will do really well. Go ahead and drag that on and then also drag it to this clip. Now some paper sound effects will be really good. So double clicking on that all in one. I like this crumbling one here and let's drag that kind of where it's happening at the end where like all four of these are popping up. I think that's gonna sound really good. So let's just solo the song by itself. Cool edit, but once we go ahead and play it with the sound effects, so much better. But lastly, I'm gonna drag an adjustment layer above all of this and go to effects and drag on Lumetri color. This is the time where I bring on my filmic LUT and I'm gonna turn down the intensity just a little bit. It seems a little too much, maybe something like 75. You can already see how that's the color grade just adds a little bit more of a cinematic look. It really makes you look a little bit more like a fake natty and just ties it together. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the sharpen to 50. It just makes like all your veins and stuff pop out a little bit more. And then under basic correction, I'm gonna change a little bit of the color temperature. Let's bring up the exposure just a little bit because it seems a little dark in here and add in a little bit more contrast. And I'm bringing down the highlights a little bit because it's a little blown out over here. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like throughout. This is looking so much sicker. This is with it before and then after. You can see like the definition in your muscles and stuff just pops so much more if you color grade properly. You like look at his arm down here. Crazy difference. Now altogether, this is what our edit looks like. I think we remade this edit almost perfectly. That's how I made the viral Sam Sulik edit on my Instagram. I'll have that ultimate gym editor bundle linked down in the description. And if you use code Sam because you're watching this video, you'll get $5 off already on top of that massive saving in the bundle itself. Definitely go ahead and download that and level up your gym edits. But that's all I got for you guys in this one. Peace. Peace.